what's going on everybody welcome to another video so this video is a beginning of a series of videos focused on the modern aspects of seven days to die um i'm going to make these videos quite short focused on what the main intention of the topic is at the time so that way it means i'll have lots of small videos with bite-sized chunks so you can for you guys watching this, you can just watch one short video focused on the area that you want to be modern on. Okay. <clears throat> uh, couple of shout outs for this. I just want to shout out a Bloodslinger because we're going to be looking at his recipe editor tool. And shout outs to Jeff Deasy, who is a good friend of mine, who's very good with the recipe scene and Seven Days to Die scene. So, yeah. Um what we are going to need for these tutorials you're going to need a copy of notepad plus plus so if you haven't got it it's a free tool the only thing it's identical to normal windows notepad but it's got tons more extra features like code highlighting and stuff like that um so download that and install it you are for this uh video you are going to need blood slingers recipe editor which you can get by going to the forums going to the modern tools section Bloodslinger's Advanced Recipe Editor. Scrolling down a bit, you will need .NET Framework 4.0, so if you haven't downloaded that, be sure to download it. Um, so the latest version is here. So we're going to download that. That's downloading here. So, yes. Uh, let us have a look at the kind of stuff that we're going to be covering in the next series of videos. This video, by the way, is going to be covering the recipes.xml file. So if you go to your Steam library and right click on seven days to die and go to properties, then go to local files and browse local files. This will bring up your seven days to die folder. Um, this is handy for a number of reasons. Um, if you can take a note of where you've uh where your folder is and just copy this link we'll use it in a minute I'll show you what that's for the area that we're going to be focusing on for the beginners tutorials which is what this series is is inside of data there is a folder called uh, config in here is a bunch of xml files which we are going to use to modify basic information about the game um so as you can see there's biomes blocks buffs entity classes entity groups groups items loot materials recipes sound and spawning um generally speaking the one of the most common ones that people kind of start with is recipes because obviously you want to be able to change the recipes of stuff in game so that's where we're going to start now if you right click on recipes uh once you've installed notepad plus plus you will have this option when you open a text file in Notepad++, seven days to die files are usually XML. So if you click on language and then XML, it'll color code it like this. So let's just have a quick brief look through this. Let's just, uh, so this is our recipe list and we can see everything that can be crafted in seven days to die. So as you can see here, if you want to create a bandage, you want to create one bandage you can't scrap bandages uh, it takes two seconds to do um, and you make it with the ingredients are one cloth count is obviously one cloth and you put it on the grid in zero position zero now I'll tell you what the grid is in fact let's just have a quick look at the grid the grid is your crafting table so it's the five by five um, crafting grid and the square that's in the middle um so if you imagine actually let's just let's just go and have a look go library so this is just a um this is just a creative board game that I've got. All right, so here's your crafting table, and these numbers that it was referring to are here. So this square here is zero, zero, and then 
this one here will be 0, 1, or this one here will be 0, minus 1, I think. By the way, though, that's what that refers to. Okay, so what we are going to do is we could edit things in here because it's a simple enough process to do. But what we're going to do is we're going to use Bloodslinger's recipe editor, which makes it a lot easier for us. So I'm just going to not save the changes. Just going to see how that download came on. Oh, there it is. So in my downloads folder, there is a zip file called 7 days editor, which is what I've just downloaded. I've just right clicked and extracted it to its own folder. And now I'm going to run the application. That's just Windows saying, we protected you. It's like, no, you didn't. You just stopped me from doing what I wanted to do. So I, I've run this before, but on the assumption that you've never run this before, this will all be blank. So what you have to do is that game folder path that we had before. So when we opened the, the file location from Steam and I told you to take a note of this, you want to copy this link to where your game is and you want to paste it into the settings for the tool. Now once you've done this, all of the rest of this stuff should populate um, automatically. So you can just press save. New releases of the editor will encourage re-extraction of the item images in DDS to ensure the latest. You should do this uh, on official game updates. Would you like to just press yes? Yes. Just basically saying, go extract the data, get all the latest images and stuff like that, and sort it all out for me. All right. So this is Bloodsinger's recipe editor. So that XML file that we opened up before, what it's done is it's loaded it into here, and it's broken it down into each item. So let's just have a quick look around the interface. This left hand side here is all of the recipes that we can have in the game. Let's have a quick look through. So we have a blueberry pie. So when we click on blueberry pie, um, you actually, that was a bad example because you can't, it because it has to be cooked, it's not necessarily the same. So that was a really bad example. So let's pick a bone shave as an example. So a bone shave just requires a bone to be on the crafting table in position zero zero. So as you can see by the various parts of the interfaces, here we can see we've got a bone shiv selected. Up here we can see the piece of XML on the file. Here we have it's exactly the same information as this, but in the form of an editor where we can type it in ourselves. And here we can actually see it in crafting table view. So just as an example, say if you wanted to make a bone shiv out of a bone and a cloth you could just drag cloth like that and then what it's automatically done is it's automatically updated the xml file to ink to it's already modified the recipe so before you start getting carried away and start changing all your recipes first thing for you to do is to generate a reset file so what this does is it makes a, a backup of your reset file. Okay. So if we um, if we go into our data folder and uh, go to the config folder, um, you will see that by clicking generate a reset uh, recipes reset file that it's actually been created here. So all it's done is made a backup copy in case you mess it up. Now, this is just a quick, we should probably take some time here to uh, make a few housekeeping suggestions. So if you're gonna be messing with a file, take a copy of it, just simply right click, copy and paste. So, And if I was you, I would call it original, not okay, original. So that way, say if I was working on spawning.xml and I broke it, I could just revert back to the original one by renaming it. Now, 
we're going to be changing the recipes file. Yeah. So we have our original here. Um, I like to actually call mine original. But say I made 50 new recipes and I had it just the way I like it. And then the fun pimps come out and bring out a new version. My recipes file, if it's been modified since the last version, will be updated and I'll lose all my changes. So once you're happy with your recipes file, or if you've been doing some work on it, or any file for that matter, I would make a copy, call it modded, and then stash it somewhere, like move it, move it to a different folder. So what you should have is, you should have a folder somewhere with all of your originals and all of your modded versions, and then... It just means that if the fun pimps decide to update seven days to die, you're not going to lose anything. Okay. So be sure that you, so that would actually mean that you have three versions of the files. You would have your current one that you're using, which is your modded, a backup of your modded for when updates come out and your original. Okay. So, I want to live life on the edge and not do any of that. And I'm just going to dive straight in and show you how to change some recipes. So, we made our reset file. Actually, I'm just going to recreate that. There we go. And we're going to, let's just change change some things. So, let's make a bone shave require a cloth and a bone. And you can see here, it's putting it in. It's putting the coordinates in. So in order to get this into game, all you have to do is click save to disk. And then it means the next time you load the game, it'll be in. Next up, we have, say, a sleeping bag. I already changed this before, actually. So the eagle eyes amongst you will notice that normally it's all cloth. Um, but I decided before that my sleeping bag requires a leather. So you've got to go and kill yourself an animal first. So let's just save that the disk there. All right, so let's just fire up seven days and have a look at our changes. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, like I say, the recipes for XML file is the easiest one to get started with. Um, continue. One thing to mention is that if you're going to mess about with files on seven days to die, make sure you're not in an actual game of something. Make sure you're actually not in game. Um, so, I want some cloth. I want some leather. And I want some bone. So, we were to actually with. Well, First things first is that if you look on here, um, you can see on bone shave, you can see the recipe is actually updated here. So that's that's quite cool. So if you wanted to make a bone shave, you would, oops, you get your bone and your cloth. And we didn't change the time on the loot, on the crafting, so it takes the same amount of time as it did before. So let's have a look. Sleeping bag. Uh, two, three, four, five. But you get the idea. So that's the basic principles behind changing a recipe. Now, if you were to open up the uh, the recipe file in Notepad++ and search for sleeping. What? Ah not called a sleeping bag is it what's it called again uh well let's have a look for bone bone shave so you can see with bone shave um it's got femur and then there's the cloth as well so we can take that cloth out because we don't really don't really want cloth in our bone shave recipe list so um if you do change stuff manually by the way in Notepad++, make sure you press reload when you come back into here. So yeah, that is the, the fundamentals of changing a recipe. Changing an existing recipe, that is, because some people 
think that the, the recipes are wrong or that they could make up a better recipe or whatever. So that's cool. So come back next time when we will cover things like cooking and creating new recipes. And hopefully we'll get a lot more done in a shorter time. And we're going to look at some other features of Blitzinger's Recipe Editor. So from me, I shall see you guys next time.